Well, we got back from Denmark, and it was an amazing time, and we saw a lot of really great shows, and we carried around a lot of bags. When we travel for Milo, we like to carry extra suitcases uh, because his set, uh, his tabletops sit on top of suitcases, old vintage suitcases, and then also to mask other parts of the set where we're hiding props and everything on the sides, we like to use vintage suitcases. Meaning, we usually travel with a suitcase that's inside of another suitcase with other props, inside of an actual suitcase that we're traveling with that can get beat up and damaged on the outside. So all of those things start to add up to a lot of weight. So, for instance, on this Denmark trip, we traveled with four checked bags and two carry-ons and a personal item each. So it, everything gets very heavy. Uh, and looking at other touring shows that were one or two people, uh, we really saw how efficient they were with how things broke down. And we started to rethink what was really important about the set for our touring. And we really want to create a smaller footprint version for when it breaks down and packs up. So rather than having the convenience of just opening a suitcase, taking things out, and putting it on top, we're going to build some dedicated tables uh, to serve our needs that then can break down just by taking off cross-bracing uh, and, and taking it apart. So it might take uh, a couple extra minutes to set up the tables when we get to the venue, but traveling with the items, we should be able to compact it down at least by half, hopefully, we can fit everything into maybe one suitcase set and then one suitcase props and puppets. So that's what I'm hoping. I've been thinking a lot about the tabletops, uh, the tables that Milo uses in his show, and I've really been thinking a lot about pedestal tables, like single spindle pedestal tables. Um, I think just when I think of vintage stage magic and stage illusions i really have that image in my mind of the like parlor table um and so i really want to make one that's that's still to our um specifications the height that we're used to working at and the uh, sort of square footage that we need for our table so i did a little research and looked up some videos on how to make uh, those types of tables. And that's what I've been working on today. So the first step of that, uh, I lucked out and found a, uh, a hardwood dinner table that was discarded and I was able to take the top off of that. Last night I glued up three layers, um, uh, sort of laminated them like so. And then today, I ran it through on the table saw to get this uh, six-sided hexagon. And then from there, set up... That's the ugly one. <laughs> I set up the... I set up the router table to be able to uh, route dovetail slots uh, into the ends. That double one, uh, I initially set it up and then after a couple pa passes, my theory is that the uh, thermal expansion from running the bit uh, shrunk things down uh, a little bit um, or maybe the collet uh, heated up and so uh, the bit actually started to travel upwards which is why you get that weird double uh, dovetail in there because it went through one time and while it was inside it actually traveled up and then when I pulled it back out it made the second one so it's still usable uh, it'll just have a little bit of a gap behind it uh, once I had these cut and I cut them to size uh, 
Then I figured out this template for the legs and the legs will slide on like that. Then I had to set up my router fence again with the same dovetail bit and run the side of the legs through cutting on the opposite side. So rather than cutting a channel, leaving a dovetail, which ends up with something like that. So these legs have a dovetail on the end right there. They still needed to be, they still need to be uh, sanded smooth, and then I'm going to run it through the router with maybe like a Roman OG bit or a roundover bit, just so it's not, uh, it doesn't look like a flat cutout. But I'm hoping that all of these pieces will be able to uh, detach and pack up in a suitcase much easier for travel. The next step is to take the uh, central pedestal, uh, take the legs off, mount it up on the chuck, and then turn it down to whatever sort of fancy profile I want. I think, though, that the length of them isn't going to fit in the capacity of my lathe. Uh, my lathe is uh, only 10 inches by 18 inches, 18 inch length. So I think I'm going to cut it in half at some sort of design point where it's hidden, and then insert some uh, threaded inserts, and then have a bolt where they can just screw together. And hopefully that'll save on a little space too. So let's see. It's the next day, and I turned one of the pedestal legs on the lathe last night, and then I finished up the second one this morning. So they roughly match each other. The pedestals were too big to fit in the lathe, like I anticipated, and so I actually cut the hexagon posts uh, about in half, and then turned each side separately, and then added uh, a piece of threaded rod on one end, and then a threaded insert on the other, so that you're not just screwing into wood every time. Like that. That should let us be able to pack it in a smaller suitcase too, if need be, instead of needing to find something that long. And then the legs just dovetail in. Like that.
Now I am building uh, a possible new tabletop to go on top, and we've gone with um, uh, a smaller design. The old ones used to be 18 by probably 23 or so, um, but to help move it down, it's basically 18 by 18 inches, and then I just cut 45 degrees uh, in the in the corners so you don't have sharp corners and it makes it look a little fancier. And then I've added a little strip of this uh, sort of one by around to keep it from warping and also from the outside to make it look a bit thicker. So that will go on here like that. It's a few days later. Sarah and I have both been working on the tables, sewing new tabletop covers and adding some masking. So I wanted to show you the almost finished product. The light part of the wood still needs to be stained to match the dark part, but it's mostly done. So the tabletops have this cloth uh, on top with some black velvet on top to give a really good contrast and also let whatever uh, dark things we want to disappear, help disappear. And then it has this red velveteen border with a little gold trim on the bottom just to make it look fancy. And the whole thing is just fitted to it so it can be taken off and washed or stored separately so it doesn't get dinged up in travel. And then the tabletop itself is sitting with uh, a border of one by uh, glued and stapled to the tabletop and then the pedestal slots into that so that it doesn't move too much side to side or around and then on top in the pedestal there's another threaded insert and then a bolt and washer hold the tabletop secure to the pedestal so it doesn't move around too much or it won't accidentally pop off during the show. There's also this little piece of uh, six millimeter EVA foam that pops into that so then you have a nice smooth surface once the tablecloth is back on, rather than having a hole that is sunken in. The masking back here is actually uh, a couple uh, tent stakes, fiberglass tent stakes that are suspended from string on the ends and then they go into a hole in the pedestal on the sides here and then this piece of black velvet cloth has a loop sewn over the top so the rods can just slide in get secured there and it just hangs down so everything's very light but it gives you plenty of room to disappear but I didn't really disappear I was just hiding Thanks for watching.